The remaining part will be the OLS assumptions. So in OLS, we have basically five assumptions, but in this stage, it's better to just talk about three of them. So the first one, maybe the most important one, is the expected value of the u given x i is zero. <coughs> that means we need to um, ensure that the expected value of the error term is zero. So one implications of the expected value of u given x is zero is that the covariance between the u i and x i is zero. So this is very important in the um, in econometrics because if u have some x impact on x, then the x may either be has a upward bias or downward bias. That means the estimator of the beta one or the to the population is not good. So y expectable of u given x i equal to zero means the covariance is equal to zero. Let's prove it. So try to expand the covariance formula. This is equal to u i minus e u times x i minus e x. So this is the covariance formula. And then this is equal to expected value of x i minus e x times u i. So you need to remember that Okay, expected value. So, no, you need to remember that this is equal to this. And again, this is equal to, this is mathematically true. So if you don't, con if you're not convinced, you may try, okay. You can take x cam equal to 1, 2, 3, and y equal to maybe 7, 8, 9. And you do the following so of course you need to sum all the x and y so these all are the same so here i can just take away the eu here so what is remaining is here then i group x i and u i minus e x times u i that is equal to expected value of x i u i minus expected value of x, expected value of ui. So expected value of ui is zero. How about the first term? I need to use the law of iterative expectation. So I take out the xi here and put this. Why I can take out the xi here? Because I use the law of iterative expectation. I calculate the expected value of u given x since x is given the variable is no longer the variable and it becomes a constant so i can take out from the expected expression as a result we can see this is zero based on our assumptions so this is actually expected value of zero thus the covariance between x and u are zero so this is the implication of the first assumptions expected value of error term given x i zero means the covariance between u i and x i is zero so the other two assumptions are quite descriptive. The second one is called the XI and YIID. So that means we need to do random sampling rather than we select some kind of data. So for example, I want to test the average of the height of the secondary school students. I need to randomly draw in various clubs or various years. I cannot just select the data at the basketball team. Otherwise, I'm, I will have some bias towards the populations. So here means we need to do random sampling. The third assumption is that XI and UI have non-zero finite fourth moments. That means the outliers are not likely. So not, like, not likely to have outliers. So the existence of the outliers will will affect the predicted values. Therefore, we assume that outliers are unlikely. Then we can make sure that the expected value of y should be consistent. So these three are the OLS assumptions. Next, we will go to mathematical parts.
basically we will talk about the distribution of beta 1 hat okay so beta 1 hat is the estimators of course they will have some probability distributions so beta 1 hat will have a distribution that with a normal distributor with the mean beta 1 and variance of beta 1 hat and in particular the sample variance will have this form 1 divided by n times the variance of xi minus mu x times ui divided by the square of the variance of xi so now i'm going to show that the sample variance of beta 1 hat is, is in this ugly form so let's do it together beta 1 hat is equal to sum of x i minus x bar times y i minus y bar and the denominator is x i minus x bar squared right so the covariance between x and y divided by variance of x so i try to write down y as an expression of beta 0 beta 1 and u y i is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x i plus u i y bar is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x bar plus u bar why i have to do this because i can do some simplifications beta 0 and beta 0 can be cancelled then by collecting the terms what I can get is x i minus x bar times beta 1 x i minus x bar plus u i minus u bar then the denominator I keep it the same <coughs> okay here we can separate two terms the first one is this term multiplied by beta 1 times x i minus x bar second one is this term multiply the second part so what i get is beta 1 times x i minus x bar square plus x i minus x bar times u i minus u bar divided by okay what we get here this term and this term can be cancelled so beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 plus the remaining x i minus x bar times u i minus u bar divided by x i minus x bar square okay by the law of large number x bar is equal to the expected value of x so this is equal to beta 1 plus x i minus x times u i i flow it flow this away so remember our last page I keep rewrite the denominator okay next by the central limit zero we know that the beta 1 hat minus the beta 1 divided by the sample standard error will be close to standardized normal distribution right that means we need to calculate one thing we need to calculate the square root of n times beta 1 hat minus beta okay we need to calculate it then we can put this at the left hand side and derive it by the sample standards that is the variance is equal to this standardized normal distribution so what is this equal to this is equal to beta n uh, square root of n 
in the bracket beta one hat minus beta one. What is beta one hat? Beta one hat is the equal to this. So beta one hat minus beta one. What is remaining is just the second part, right? So this is equal to. So I put one divided by n in both numerator and denominator and keep it the same. So the next step, I need to do some operation. So I need to separate the fraction into two. So I separate the fraction, the numerator to the numerator, denominator to the denominator. And in between, I need to add the variance of xi minus ex times ui and take the square root. So this is the standard deviation. Then again, put the variance of xi minus ex ui here. So I multiply this term and divide this term and keep this constant. Okay. So look here. So this is some kind of error term, right? The x times the the residual or error. So this is equal to has it has a mean of zero. So actually this is minus the average. So this is the expected value minus the average divided by the sample standard error. Therefore, the second term here has the standardized normal distribution 0 and 1, while we keep the first term. So if we multiply it, this expression into the distribution, what we can get is that the, the mean zero times average is equal to zero. Part of the value. So we can put one plus two n and divide by two. Variance, we square the numerator. And we also square the denominator. But for the denominator, this is in fact equal to expected value of xi minus ex. Then the whole term square it. So what is the denominator? This is in fact equal to variance of xi square okay therefore we can get the expression of the of the variance of beta 1 hat so we got the variance of beta 1 hat if we want to get a sample standard deviation or a sample variance you need to what you need to do is just copy this population variance then divide by n, then you are done. So here I proved why the beta one has the distribution with the mean beta one and sample distribution sample variance in this form. So why we need to take this form? So whether they are consistent, the answer is yes because 
if we take a look of the variance, when n goes to infinity, the variance will become zero. So this satisfies. When n goes to infinity, the variance goes to zero. So this satisfies the consistent definition, the consistency lemma. How about unbiased? So is beta one hat unbiased? Again, yes. So we know that beta one hat has the expression of beta one plus. This term okay, so if we put an expected value here, expected value of a constant beta one is still beta one, and for the second term, we put an expected value for the second term, what will it become? So here we will apply the law of iterable expectations again. First, we take out the x i minus c x. We put the expected value of u i given x here. Right. So if we given the x, we can capture. We can draw this x variable out to the expected value bracket. So what is we mean in the denominator unchanging? Okay, what is the expected value of u given x? Zero. Therefore, this is equal to beta zero plus expected value of zero. Um, beta one, sorry for typo. Okay, so this shows that, again, beta one hat is unbiased.